Hey guys, today we're going to do another body control module EEPROM analysis video. On this one, I'm going through this Delphi 259-28052 out of a 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. This particular type of Delphi BCM was also used in the Pontiac G5, uh, the Chevrolet HHR, the Pontiac Solstice, and the Saturn Sky. And normally, you know, in these, it's not too much trouble to get them open. You know, there's tabs around the sides and you can get right to going on the EEPROM. But this particular model is a little bit harder because there's these threaded inserts here. And these threaded inserts are actually a form of a rivet nut. If we kind of zoom in here, you can see what I'm talking about here. And they've been flared on the other side as part of the assembly process. And so they're actually holding the two halves of the BCM together. So the first thing we're going to have to do is drill those guys out in order to get this separated. So you can um, take your harness. There's a couple of things you're going to need to do. You can take a harness connector when you go to the salvage yard. I had a, a video I did earlier where I put together uh, a wiring harness for these. And you can, you can take a look at that. Uh, and I'll put a link up in the upper right. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get a connector screwed in here so that you can get an idea for how far into this threaded insert this captive bolt goes through the threaded insert on the other side. Because what you're going to want to do is find a screw that will fit that after we drill this out that you can then lock tight in to hold it on the other side, right? So I've gone through, you know, my pile of spare bolts here and found a couple that will do this job pretty nicely. So now I know how I'm going to hold it in when I'm done. I also needed to find a, a nut and a bolt that will fit in here so that I can kind of use this on the other side to hold in the vise while we're drilling this out, right? So that's really the only extra part to this before we can get to the EEPROM part that I wanted to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this guy back again and get him all set up to drill out and I'll show you that. All right guys to drill this out what I've done is I've taken the uh, larger relays off of both sides of this BCM for some more clearance and I found a larger bolt that's of the right thread. I found a nut that's of the right thread and I'm going to put it in on the side of this insert that's flared. Right? I'm assuming this insert is factory flared rather than the pressed in flaring on the other side and we're just going to use this nut to kind of secure it. I'm going to put it in the vise and that's going to help us hold on to this guy while we go to drill him out. Kind of move you guys a little bit closer here and what I'm going to start with is an 11 30 seconds bit and that should start to tear some material off and then we'll step up probably to a 23 I'm sorry, uh, 11, 30 seconds, and yeah, and then step up to a 2364th. Sorry about that, guys. But we're just trying to slowly open it up without tearing into the plastic section. So I'm going to go to the larger bit now. You got to go kind of slow on this. You want to keep checking it. All we're trying to do is burn that flare off. So we're just going to keep stepping up bit sizes until we can get that outer flaring that's been pressed in during manufacturing burned off so this insert can be removed. All right. Might have it right there. All right, so yeah, we just got a little bit there. Going to get a pair of pliers and see if I can just remove that flaring piece so we can separate it. 
All right, guys, let's see if we can work this piece off here. If I bump the camera, apologize in advance. Kind of trying to look at this in an angle while letting you guys see it. All right, so I think at that point, we've got this one where we can pull it out. Might be just a little bit more here. And that comes right out, right? And so you have this whole insert piece now drilled out. And then what I would do next is I would take this guy, put him on the grinding wheel and just flatten off this burring. And then we'll be able to use the small screw that we found that fits this to re-secure it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other one and I'll show you what this looks like with it burred down. All right guys, these came out really nice. Both of these kind of burred down. You can see that on the factory flared end here, there are flats. And that's what prevents these from rotating when you're tightening up the connectors. You can see there's a kind of a hexagonal shape on the front side that these fit into, right? So this first guy here on the front side, we can put this in just as is. And now we can put a little Loctite when we get all done with the electrical work. We can put a little Loctite on a screw like this. And it'll be small enough that it'll recess under here and won't be in the way of any relay being inserted. And it doesn't go in far enough to interfere with the captive bolt that's retaining the plug. So that one's easy. The other one goes in the same way on this side, but we're not gonna be able to put a screw on this side because we've obviously got a plug here. And so what we'll do on this one is we'll use an epoxy right around the ridge here, and then just some right around the top here. And we'll epoxy this guy back in because we don't have to worry about rotational forces. We just need it to stay in there when we go to put the bolt in that's holding this particular plug. And that'll work out nicely. Might even you know, do a little bit of a small staking right here on the inside just to make it a little bit of a tighter fit with the epoxy. And that'll be a good repair for this. So we can open it up on both the original and our salvage yard donor. And we can copy over the contents of the EEPROM or you can physically transfer the EEPROM, whatever you end up choosing to do. So let's go take it inside and get to work on the board. Take these fasteners, set them aside. And now we can proceed kind of like in the usual fashion to get our clips released. Just gonna try to get one off, get a little wedge on there. Be, they do have a tendency to wanna work back on, unfortunately. So you gotta find some way to keep it wedged up until you can get three of them off, and then once you get three of them off, it's not too bad to get the rest unclipped. All right. There we go. Just be careful when you're separating out this piece from this piece that you don't bend any of these pins. All right, so now we've got that part off. Now we need to just get these pins pushed out and separate our board. Again, you just want to be very gentle going around. And actually, before I do all of that, let me just take a look and see if I see a device that might be what we're looking for right on this side see a 95080 EEPROM right here. And who we're looking for here, why don't we just go ahead and try to do a read of that guy and see if we get lucky. I'm going to use my Pomona clip here 
guys can always count on them to grab on the first time. So let me get you a shot, guys, of this particular IC, this EEPROM. It's made by ST, and it's a 95080. So hopefully that's coming in good. I'll see if I can bring it up a little closer with it not getting blurry. There we go. Didn't have to uh, go to the microscope on this one. All right, the only problem with this particular board design, though, this is one of these kind of boards where, whoops, sorry about that. This is one of these kind of boards where you cannot read this guy in circuit. If you try to hook a test clip up to this, which you're going to end up doing because of the way this particular device is wired, it's going to attempt to power up several other devices that are on here, and you're going to get an overcurrent error or you know a problem like that. So we're going to have to remove him in order to read him. So I'm going to get set up to take him off the board. All right, guys, we're going to um, go ahead and pull this off. And the way I like to take these chips off, I used to use hot air, but I don't do that anymore. I use product called ship quick which allows you to change the melting point of the solder and just remove it with a regular gun so put a little flux on there and then we're going to take a piece of the alloy and just mix it in with the original solder that's on the board there and it should come right off Give me a second here to get the iron hot and get a pair of tweezers. Okay, we are set. So all we really need to do is just melt this alloy in on one side. It's got a very low melting point. It takes a very short amount of time to take something off with this particular product. All right, we'll clean up the pads where we took it off, and we'll clean up the pins, and we'll put it in our EEPROM reader, and we'll see what we got. All right, guys, here's just a quick look under the microscope. You can see that we've got those pads all nice and cleaned up, and we've removed any of that chip quick alloy that might have splashed around them. So we're all ready to remount the chip after we do our reading and writing. All right, guys, we got this chip cleaned up, and we've got it mounted into a carrier here. This is one of those kind of carriers where you, you just press down, drop the chip in there and it grabs onto the legs. And then we can hook this up to our inexpensive CH341A programmer. Just remember since we're doing a 95 series chip, we're going to need to put it in the back side of the reader. Remember the front on this particular type of programmer, the front four are the 24 uh, XXX series EEPROMs and the back four are for the 25 XXX EEPROMs and then with the mods from that link I put in the right you can also do 93s and 95s like this 95080. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull it up in our AS programmer software and let's see what we get. I can get you guys zoomed in. All right, so this is an ST chip, so we're just going to pick 95080. And then we're going to give it a read. So if I can get it up here where you guys can see everything clearly. All right. So, what kind of information do we have on here? Well, this guy up here in the upper right is the serial number off of the BCM. So if we take a look at the front cover and the label, you can see right down here at the bottom, there's a number here. And other than the last six digits or so, that is what you see embedded here just backwards, right? So you'll find, for example, that instead of 7808, this really reads as 87852RA91 and it's just backwards. Each by each two pairs of characters are flipped. The next thing we've got right here is the VIN at this location, just minus the one at the front. You'll find the vehicle's VIN. 
and then all the way near the bottom, right here is where the mileage is encoded. And it's stored three times on these particular vehicles. So you can see these four bytes here and those same, well, actually I highlighted the wrong one here, guys. These four bytes here and these four bytes here and these four bytes uh, here that repeat in those three places. That's the obfuscated encoded um, value for the mileage. So I can get this camera to tilt down just a little bit more so you guys can see that. I don't know if that was cut off, but right here at the end of location 3B0, said 3BD, and then here, and then here. Now, if you have software like TacoSoft that lets you do mileage correction, you could go type that value in that it gave you for the mileage that you were correcting. But all we really want to do on these is load this whole value up, save it, open up our replacement, and write the, the replacement chip um, with this value so that we'll be back in business. That's all that we really need to do on this kind of repair. There's really no need to, you know, overwrite the values that are in there. Just showing you that information in case you find that that's useful to you. All right, guys, you can sometimes get away with uh, a test clip on something like this. Uh, I didn't have the usual luck I do with these on this first run, which is why we went ahead and pulled it. If you do use one, I highly recommend a Pomona brand clip. These guys really, really hold on versus the cheapo you know, Chinese stuff you usually get. But this particular guy um, didn't cooperate with being read on in circuit. You can sometimes run into this problem with the newer, later models, the replacement ones. The older ones, I don't seem to hit that problem as much. But uh, either way, you know, taking it out is probably preferable anyway because you don't have any interference from anything else in the circuit. If I helped teach you something today or help save you some money or you learned something, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps with the video being found out there on YouTube. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help out. And as always, thanks for watching.